21. Has complied with and get copies of it to everybody. Oh, it sounds like somebody's oh, yeah, we'll, we'll report it. I'd like to read it too. To yeah. full body. It just says that we can take a vote in ordinance committee to refer an order to the city council without a recommendation. Oh, okay. Which there was some dispute about previously. Okay, that's good to know. Hey, Linda, how are you? Good. We're just about to start. <laughs> I'm going to call this meeting to order. This is the Charter and Rules Committee uh, meeting set for Monday, April 24th. Uh, present, our, our president to my left, Councillor Kevin Jordan. To his left, Councillor Lyndon Bacon. To my right, Councillor Rebecca Lisi and Councillor Todd McGee. Welcome, everybody. Welcome. <clears throat> our, our first item, there are copies of them, but they just came out our minutes of our last meeting, which was last November. Chair, will entertain a motion. I'd, I'd like to uh, just kind of keep the minutes on the table at this point for us to have a chance to review those a little more, second. Mr. Chairman. Motion made a second to, re to keep the minutes of the last uh, committee meeting on the table. All those in favor? Any opposed? So moved. Motion to take item two off the table. Motion second. made a second to remove item two from the table. All those in favor? Aye. Any opposed? Introduced by Councilor Tomlin at the Hoyoke City Council. Adopt the provisions of Mass General Laws Chapter 3228 pertaining to the identification of members of the Municipal Retirement Boards. Uh, this was referred to committee. It was tabled at our last meeting to get more information. The maker of the order and I spoke this, uh, this afternoon. Uh, we have had contact with uh, Cheryl Dugray. And this is at no cost to the city. It's, uh, we, we feel that a vote is required according to uh, Mrs. Dugray. And uh, Councillor Tomlin said that if we, if we could uh, adopt it and uh, if there's any questions that can't be answered this evening, we'll get the answers for uh, next, uh, next Tuesday. So what, this is some special act or law that we're accepting and by doing that it indemnifies the members of the retirement board what is, does that mean that the city would indemnify them and pay or the retirement fund would I mean what 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 is what's the current rule they're not indemnified already the I think it's because they're, they're a special board that is considered uh, 
Um, it, it's not quasi, Kevin. I believe it's you know they're 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 appointed. You know the mayor has an appointment. The retirement director, the auditor, which we appoint, is automatically on it. So it's it's a you know, quasi in that sense, but because they're they're. Uh, <clears throat> their rules and their makeup is is the retirement um, re responsibilities themselves. They come under they don't come under city um, domain that way. But in order to to be identified, the way it was explained to me is we need to adopt the general laws that allow that to take place. We, we're all you know, and, and most employees that work for the city you know come under the same general laws. But because of the nature of this uh, committee. Um, that is the best answer I can give you. I understand if you want a further answer, that's that's fine. Well, I would just like to know what the implications of it is because they recently came out with a legal opinion from their advisor saying that they're not a municipal board, and they were. And of course, as we know, that related to the issue of coming under the five o'clock rule. They they were very adamant that they did not want to meet after five o'clock since they're not a municipal board and. So they meet at about 9 or 10 in the morning. And the question then becomes, why are we... So if they did some inappropriate act, you know, you, my point is you can't be separate when you want to be separate, but then be together when you want to be together. So the point is if they did something inappropriate, that won't be paid by the retirement trust fund. That's going to be paid by the city's general fund. If there was a payout, I, I, I'm just I'm just kind of curious as to the mechanics of that. What does what by adopting that? What does that mean? Because I'm assuming they're indemnified now, but they're probably going to use what their own operating budget. If so, if there was to pay a settlement, if say somebody said, "You denied me my retirement because of some inappropriate act," or whatever, how would a settlement get paid now? And what would this mean by doing this? Good questions. Councilor Bacon? I'm wondering if we should hear from our legal hmm. on this before we take an action and make a recommendation as a committee. Maybe refer it to legal and to yeah. Cheryl to get an opinion as to like what's the true impact of this. Right. I don't think we'll be able to no, come up with those answers. I just don't think we know at this point. Okay, is that the form of, <coughs> excuse me, form of a motion? Yes. Motion made second to refer to the legal department. If I can make a suggestion um, also to the auditor's department, because we do appoint the auditor who serves on this board, yes. and yep. <coughs> I think we should have something at stake there. But to get a legal opinion and a, co <coughs> a copy to Mrs. Dugary with the retirement board director. Oh, uh, I, I think if, if yes. Yeah, that would probably you know, be a good idea. I, I write right on this, Mr. Chairman. <laughs> it's been a long time since I had to do this, you know. Um, before you leave, remind me to ask you about those uh, parking permits. I bet he. Okay. About old, uh, I'm talking to Todd, sorry. About um, various streets in Ward 6. I sent you an email saying, do we. Motion. Motion is to refer to the legal department, to the retirement uh, director, and a copy to the auditor for legal opinions and, and to weigh in on this. And we will invite the appropriate people in at the next meeting. All those in favor? Aye. Any opposed? So moved. Item number three. Motion to take it off the table. Second. Introduced by Councilor McGee, Leahy McGivern, ordered that the one-year appointment of the City Council Administrative Assistant be changed to a two-year appointment. This is in the charter currently, so this would require a charter change. Charter change? Yeah, the charter currently stipulates that the administrative assistant has a one-year term, so we'd have to amend the charter to do it. Is this something we feel real strong about doing, or? Councilor, Councilor McGee. It was just a thought. I mean, every year bringing up uh, the same position, whereas if it's two years, you know, and, you know, a group of elected officials are coming in, you could have the, you know, tie it to that. That's what I was kind of thinking of, you know, tying the two together, whereas 
you know, every year you got to bring this up and up. And if if it was changed mid year or something happens, you know, are you retraining someone or something? So I just thought maybe by grouping it together every two years, it would make the system a little um, easier to follow. But I'll, you know, I'll defer to anyone as to what you want to do. I was just thinking outside the box. My, my only thinking on a lot of these is I don't get too worried about the, the years of service because we're not re-advertising the jobs. So basically, as you, these things become perfunctory votes. Basically, once you're in, you're in, unless, um, you know, somebody's doing a really atrocious job, then, then you know, I don't have a strong opinion one way or the other, but I would say if you had somebody who's good, they just seem to keep rolling. If you got somebody who's bad, you'll probably be wanting to have a one-year term. I mean, if you had to, like, compete for your job every year, that might be a little tough, you know. You know, you had to go through an interview process and blah, 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 blah. But that doesn't seem to be what we do. Like we no, don't, it doesn't. Yeah, yeah. Um, I guess the theory could be could be advertised every year. And, and, you know, we've Conceivably. paid that before. So, yeah. you know. Yeah. You want to leave it the same, leave it the same. I was just trying to think of, yeah. you know, tying everything together. That's all. Or to the board. I'd be willing to, um, if I may. Councilor Lucy. Um, I'd be willing to entertain this idea of a two-year administrative assistant um, when we make the move to advertise the positions, the appointed positions throughout the city. Um, so until then, I, I'm in favor of the one-year appointment. Yeah. Mr. Bacon. Thank you. I would just comment that to do the charter change, we have to go through a whole lot of procedural steps. So it seems that if we had a compelling reason that included it, it would maybe be more worth the energy. Okay. I rarely doubt Councillor Jourdain about these items, but I honestly thought that we did away with the charter part when we did away with the messenger part. But it's in there. Still in there. Yes, sir. All right. You want me to look it up, or you'll take? No, nah, no. We we can always catch it's in up. Me, it's in me, Nico. <laughs> you can look it up. I mean, if this committee doesn't seem like it, we can get a five to nothing vote. I'm not too sure we can get a favorable vote with the council. I entertain a motion to give leave to withdraw. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Five to nothing. <coughs> Item number four, introduced by Councillor Roman, who is not with us tonight. Uh, motion to remove it from the table. Second. Motion by second, remove from the table. All those in favor? Right. Any opposed? Uh, this is that the Joint Committee is becomes an ad hoc committee. I'm sorry. When the, the Joint Committee is an ad hoc committee created by the City Council President in 2011, the need is to committee to become a permanently is clearly evident. Current receivership of the of the public schools, as well as the need for continued improved communication from the city council and school committee. I think it speaks for itself. Um, is there any? I have no problem with this. I keep it three members, though, right? We don't need yeah. to go to yes. Five. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. I'll become three members. <laughs> yeah, you never know. Yeah. We're, we're gonna have a little. You're gonna have to revisit we're gonna, the rules next we, year. On I, I'm gonna suggest. I'm gonna make a proposal in May that we this summer we take a look at that. Yeah, that's just, coming. Yeah, because we got to be ready for that. Yeah. Um, All right. So a motion on the floor then would be to uh, to adopt and to recognize the joint ad hoc committee as a permanent um, subcommittee of the city council. Thank yep. All those in favor? Aye. Any opposed? So moved. Remove item number five from the table. Second. Motion made a second to receive. Remove, remove item number five from the table. All those in favor? Any opposed? This is introduced by Councillor Jourdain that the section 23 of the charter be amended to provide that no member of the city council may also be a city employee while serving as a member of the city council. I'd like to make a motion to adopt it. I think it's pretty straightforward. Uh, you know, this has come bouncing around. Then, then there was different interpretations of it. Uh, one point it was you can't do it. Then another one was you can do it, but you can't take the two salaries. 
I'm just on this one, I'm of the opinion it's just too big of a conflict of being a city councilor and a city employee simultaneously. Um, I just don't see, you know, if I'm a firefighter and I'm sitting on the city council, they'll say stuff like, oh, well, I'll eliminate the conflict by I don't get paid. When in fact the chief oversees my overtime, he oversees my benefits, he oversees what truck I sit on. I mean, there's just so many, there's no way you're going to be independent. And that's what this board, the city council really needs to be, is independent uh, to really be effective as a city council. So I, um, I think this is a good order. I, do, you, uh, do you think we need to, Mr. Chairman? Uh, Swayze. Do you think we need to? <clears throat> send it over to ordinance to draft some language for the charter change because it's really only an ordinance that would be able to request the the legal form this committee can't ask for the legal no, form I, I disagree I thought it was an ordinance we, if it was an ordinance we would have to send it to ordinance committee but charter this committee took over the charter responsibilities of what the ordinance committee used to have and it's 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 three ways you know, the city council two thirds vote with the mayor can sign off on a charter change. A ballot question can be passed, or the charter review commission can take up you know any changes. That's the only three ways you can change the charter. But we, you know, if we wish to, we can recommend the city council would do it. We can recommend as a committee, or you know, get it into proper language. But we can recommend as a committee. So, are there certain areas of the charter that can't be amended that way, though? We can amend anything in the charter. Some require a citizen's vote, though. Right. Okay. Because we can't, the law, state law prohibits us from changing anything to do with our composition. Okay. Our I terms. Was something that was Yeah. Th th those, those, those we can't just do, okay. but us, the mayor, and the legislature. It's us, the mayor, the legislature, and a vote of the people. Okay. But for this, it would be simpler. Yeah, because that's yeah. a qualification. Two thirds, the mayor, and, and then the legislature. Yeah. I, I, I agree with the uh, with the reasoning for this. Um, I've always felt uneasy about full time employees, especially from the major departments with big budgets, how they could probably could not even vote on some of those key issues, which is to me what a city councilor needs to do. And I think Kevin, you know, said that um, appropriately. Um, what of about do we know special employees and? I don't want to say part-time employees, but you know, mm -hmm. people that are doing things like, like coaching or coaching, being a football announcer. Yes, football. I don't want to bring it up, but no, 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 no you're absolutely. It's a you know, <laughs> the current rules stay like, but there's all these like I had to go through like ten different criteria that the state ethics commission makes you jump all these hoops. You can't be you know so many hours. You can't be this. You can't be that. You can't make over so much. You blah 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 blah. And so it turns out, like, this thing gives me about, if you did all the games cumulatively, it's a, like 200 bucks a year. If I don't even think it's that much. And, um, but you get somebody who could be, well, he's not a city councilor, so it wouldn't matter. But, um, but theoretically, let's just say you had, uh, say Dave Guzman, when he was being a coach, well, he's still a coach at the high school football team. And he was also a city councilor, say theoretically, and wasn't tax collector. Um, you know, some of that. Um, I don't know. Do you want to put a stipend? Like, you can't be an employee that earn. You know, you can't earn over five thousand dollars a year or something in full time. I mean, if you wanted to do something like that, but. Um, I, I don't want. I'd like to see like the legal form, like what yeah. does Section Twenty Three say as it is, and then what kind of amendments do we want to make, and then where, yeah. where does, oh. um, so the Section Twenty Three of the Charter is going to also resonate with some part of the, our ordinances, so it would like to, it would be useful to see them side by side. Yeah, yeah, no, good point. And we are going to refer this to the law department to do it to do form. to put it in legal form mm -hmm. before we vote on it, mm -hmm. so we can have it come back to this committee. Mm -hmm. Or, or if we feel comfortable, we can just have it go to the next city council meeting. But we'll have the legal form, you know, first. Um, and, and to Councilor Drain's point is, I don't want to, you know, I, I think people should be able to coach, be football, and I don't, you know, even though it, it, the the language yeah. could pre preclude someone from doing that. So yeah, I, I think I don't know if it's a dollar figure, but more so a, you know, a, an hourly figure, yeah. you know, or like. 
anybody that's part time is thirty hours, if I remember correctly. Maybe even twenty. Oh right, but yeah. you want to make it less than that. Yeah. You want to make it, yeah, like so when anyone working under twenty hours, 10 hours a week or something, you're okay. But if you're well, what, ten you, hours a week, I don't know. Coaches are salary, but you know their their hours could yeah. be more than. You know they don't get paid per hour, but they they could be working a lot of hours. Well, what if I'm working part time at the police department? Or I'm doing not police officer, I'm just you know, janitorial or whatever yeah. it is. Can I still vote on the budget if I'm a city councilor if I'm working in the department? I would say no. No. So then that's that's what's going Even to my point is time. if I'm a football coach or an announcer, they have no impact on the budget based on the department where they're working for. So you gotta tie the language somehow to that. Yeah. Or maybe you say no city employee that hasn't been designated a special municipal employee or something. Because if you're on the council, you still have to get special employee status. And that has to be approved, that has to be voted on by the council and approved by the Ethics Commission. So no employee except a special employee could sit as city council? Is that what you're suggesting? Yeah, that needs to be reversed. Yeah. So no city employee except, except special, a special a special may serve as a member. That might yeah. work. I don't know. If you want to make an exclusion for special employees, that because I think I yeah. think if you're on, you have to get that because otherwise you're not allowed to get the two salaries. Yes. And you have to meet all this ethics commission hoops. So maybe that's how you could word it for those type of people. Because that's actually current law. You need that even with no change right now. Would they still be able to collect the pay from both? Yeah. If you get designated. Special, as a special, yeah. Because currently, uh, if they're an employee, they can't collect both. Only. Unless you have, because a lot of the ones like, we really only had this once with, with uh, Don. And... So Don didn't take the city council salary. Right. Don took his police salary. Right. But theoretically, we had we had one other one. Oh really? And then he chose. We found out he couldn't take the oh, salary. George, city council. He George, walked away. George, George Bruce, <laughs> yeah. yeah, he 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 quit the day of yeah. the inauguration. Oh, no. And never yeah. never filled the seat, right? Right. He never filled the seat. Yeah. <laughs> I, I, that, I think that's perfect. The so the amendment is we're going to add special employees can do both. Yeah, because it takes a special employee has to meet the criteria. Yeah, and if that's you're a city problem. councilor, you can't do both without being a special employee. That's right. That covers it. Okay. Any further discussion? No. On a motion to adopt, refer to the law department for legal form with the amendment that special employees can do both. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? So moved. That, for the record, was Ryan. If you're listening, that was five A. And the next one is going to be 5B. Okay. Motion to take 5B off the table. Second. Motion made a second to remove from the table 5B, an order introduced by Councillor Jardine that Rule 26 be amended to state that the third order of the council business directly after the Pledge of Allegiance shall be the statement, God bless America, God bless the City of Hoyoke, and God bless the City Council. Make a motion to adopt and make the rule change. A motion made and second to receive, adapt, and make the rule change under discussion. Councilor Jardine? Yeah. I mean, we've been saying this at the meeting for years, and I just thought it was, you know, after the Pledge of Allegiance, I thought it was appropriate that we put it on the, uh, as uh, part of the rule. I, uh, I just think this is a nice statement. It's a very unifying statement about, you know, our country, our city, and the city council, and, uh, you know, I just think that's uh, that's very nice. I know in Congress and in, in the Massachusetts legislature, they go a step further. You know, they have full chaplains. They say full prayers before the opening of the houses of Congress and things of that nature. I don't think we would need to go to that extent. But um, I think this is just a nice sort of tradition that we've had here in Holyoke. And uh, I think it's time to just put it in the rule. Council Lucy. Thank you. Um, I remember when this order was filed, there was um, significant public presence saying that they objected to the codification of this statement um, and that they rather see uh, the separation between church and state um, preserved. So I think that it's fine if, if it's a tradition and we wanted to maintain saying it as part of the um, 
<coughs> just rituals that we go through, but to codify it, I will not be voting in favor of that this evening. Mr. Bacon. Thank you. Um, what we're talking about here are rules of the council, and I don't think we're elevating the debate to that level by making a reference. So I would support <coughs> this um, in the tradition of our body politic, locally and state-wise and federal-wise. Councilor Dre. Yeah, just, just to add, I mean, codification means it's becoming a law. I mean, it's a rule of the council. It's not a law. We need to distinguish the two. Um, we have the Pledge of Allegiance on the agenda. It's it's actually in the rule. If you look at it, it's a specific item on the agenda. Um, you know, there's people that find the Pledge of Allegiance divisive and this and that and, you know, this is this is not a good thing. I would just say, just so we're all crystal clear about this whole church and state thing, there is absolutely, positively been upheld in the courts a hundred times over that you can give a God bless America, God bless Holy That is not even close to being illegal. Just, just, just so we're all crystal clear. And again, I'm going to restate. The United States Congress opens every session of the U.S. Senate and U.S. House, not in a God bless America and God bless the U.S. Senate and God bless Washington, D.C. They say, with a paid chaplain, a full prayer before the uh, blessing the work of the legislator. So I just... I know that term gets thrown around like, oh, this is separation of church and state. I just want to understand there is no legal basis for that. It, you, one could, that could be somebody's opinion. I respect everybody's opinion. But I'm just saying is this is um, no problem then in that way. Councilor Lacey. Thanks. And just for the record, I'm not saying that that is illegal to make this statement. I'm just okay. saying that... All right. um, it, it, it is a form of codification if we're bringing it into the formal written rules of, of this body, and, and I will not be supporting that. And I, I'll, I feel like I used to be the one to take on the "In God Bless the City Council" statement, and um, you know I've been I've been resistant to do that with this um, order pending. Um, without the order to say that you know this would be part of our rules, I'd be happy to take up that line again. Um, but I do understand the concerns that were raised um, from the public around, um, again, in my, in my opinion and, and the opinion that they expressed that evening, the, the codification where it becomes a rule that we must say these things as opposed to it being um, an intention or um, something inspirational as opposed, uh, yeah, something inspirational as opposed to something that's um, codified or, and, and regimented. Councilor Jordan. I totally appreciate that. Thank you for that. I hope you will continue that tradition. But let's just be crystal clear. When we say the public, you know, Mom and Pa, I'm getting a little tired of this, and I, I'm going to just digress for a moment. This has nothing to do with what you said, Councilor Lisi. But I'm getting a little tired of the public says, because five people show up at the microphone. The rest of my constituents are out here busting their hump every day, working, and because they don't feel like they got to show up because somebody uh, has the night off. And I really wonder what some of these people do for a living to be perfectly honest with you. That's a whole other conversation. But nevertheless, because my constituents, mom, pa, kettle out there working all day, or they're 80 years old and they don't want to come down here at night, that somehow whoever the five people that show up at the microphone and say, I am offended by saying God bless America, right? That that somehow is representative of the public. Or, I mean... I hope we're a little more sophisticated than that, that we can pick up that I would be more than happy to have a survey of Holyoke that finds that statement offensive. And if anybody has a problem with people saying, God bless America at city council meetings, I'll bet you 80% of the citizens have no problem with that. That would be, and if we did a, the public. Absolutely. Thanks. And I, I don't want to go um, back and forth on, on this so much because I think it's pretty clear that we just have um, different opinions. But I don't think anyone's saying that they object with the statement. It's the objection to the codification. I think that even that evening when we heard, quote, unquote, you know, the members of the public who showed up, <laughs> the, the sample that showed up that evening um, said that they're not objected. Uh, I'm sorry. Uh, they, they don't object and they are not offended to this phrase, um, what they are objecting to is um, the 
uh, writing into our city council rules this statement so that it is mandatory as opposed to something, again, that is inspirational? I would say it's part of the agenda, but it's not mandatory. No more than if somebody wanted to sit down during the Pledge of Allegiance. We can't force a member to say the Pledge of Allegiance either. How are we doing? We're good. We good? Yeah. Can I give my two cents in? Oh, of um, I was in a tennis match here. You know, like I was watching the ball. <laughs> no, no, back it's and good. Forth no, it's good. That's what committees are about, and I, I, I love it. I respect her opinion. I totally do. Um, that meeting when there was one person who I promised him that I would tell him about this meeting, and I forgot, and I apologize. But um, I thought a lot about this, both about what Rebecca has said, what Kevin has proposed, and, and, and what it means. And I'm going to vote in favor of it for, for two reasons. You know, One reason is I, I think a rule can be uh, a rule can be changed at you know, any time. A rule can be ignored, at, not ignored at any time, but can be, uh, can be voted. Um, I lost it. Uh, change. change, suspended at, at any time. So I, I don't. I'm not worried about the fact that it's a rule. At first I was, but now I see it. I see it a little bit different. What I think is good is, you know, the Pledge of Allegiance is us as Americans. What Congress does, what the state house representatives do, the state senate, United States Senate, United States Congress does, is their business. And it's about country. And it's about state. This is about us in the city. And I think it says a very short little phrase. Let's get on a positive note before this meeting starts. Um, doesn't always work, but I think it's a nice way to start the meeting we to try. say let's let's think positive <laughs> at least to begin the meeting. Yeah. That's my two cents. That's a good point. Is there any further discussion? The motion then is to adopt and to re recommend to the city council that we make the rule change and that this becomes part of our rules. That these words that have been said for since Pat Higgins was a city councilor, yes, you know, just quite a while ago, you know. All those in favor? Any opposed? No. So, three to two. Okay, I can catch up with this. Passes three to two with the recommendation. I take item number six off the table. Motion and second to receive and take item number six off the table. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Item number six. Six is actually introduced, it doesn't say on the agenda, but introduced by Councilor Alexander. Uh, that this, uh, the order is that the, count, that the City Council provide, that the Council, the um, City Solicitor, to the Council be provided with a microphone at the desk, says her desk, and an internet connection and printer access to the laptop when the City Council, within the City Council chambers, so that he or she may address the Council from her desk and to provide a better needed information and documents. That's on. To adopt. <laughs> Receive a dot and send to with the HD and E or just to our IT department. I think I, I think a little bit of money is needed, so I think we need a little bit of help from the PEG access. Does that make sense? Yeah, sure. I think it's still the microphone, the fact that she doesn't have a microphone at her desk. Or but part of it, too, is is that if, if we get a microphone, the, you know, it doesn't, the desk doesn't have to be there, but wherever the desk is after next year, we might be able to bring the, the solicitor into this yeah. room right. with more, more right. ease and comfort, but yeah. that they can speak from their desk like, like we do. Save one of the desks. Yeah. Right. Oh, yeah. I don't think it requires a rule change because we don't have a rule that says the solicitor can't sit at their desk and speak. Okay, so just... I think the last sentence could be removed, but the rest of it adopted. Okay, so amendment is to adapt the micro, you know, microphone... So the whole part except... They're, they're connected through Wi-Fi, right? We, we have Wi-Fi. Yeah, 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 yeah. So that's been complied with. It's just the microphone. Yeah. The microphone. What would she need a printer for? At the desk? I know, I know. I think we have a printer in back. 
Yeah, all she has to do is, is yeah, connect to the printer and back, and we'll go pick it up. So the order should really be that we ensure that the printer in the back is networked in some way that... Yeah. Okay, so does that make sense? Mm -hmm. We're going to amend, amend the original uh, request for microphone only, not only, but microphone be adopted, referred to the IT department, and we'll just report that the rest of it has, in one way or the other has been complied with through Wi-Fi, through, as the president said, she can, anyone can sit, you know, any city solicitor can, can remain at their desk as long as they can get to a mic. The only reason we've made them stand is because the, the public has to hear them. Yeah, right, right. We're eliminating the rule. Yeah, because there's, well, no, there's no need for a rule. Right. Yeah. As if needed, so it's all right. Yeah. Okay. On that motion, then, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? So moved. Motion to take uh, number seven off the table. Second. Motion made a second to receive item number seven, removed from the table. Introduced by Councilor Jordan, the city charter be amended to combine the positions of the elected city treasurer and council appointed tax collector into a new position entitled collector and, tax and treasurer of the city of Hoyoke. That this position be appointed by the city council to a three year term. That this change be take effective January 2018 with the possibility of a transition plan in the interim if legally permissible. I have no problem uh, not doing this, but at the time it was viewed, I want to say I had a conversation, I believe, with the former treasurer, this would be Mr. Lumbra, who was warm to this idea. And at that time, I don't recall if the well yeah, actually I think the council I think if we were talking about whether or not we were going to fill the collector position or something something like that I believe at the time do we really need both jobs I don't know or I believe one of the models was talked about was having a merge collector treasurer with having the, the collector position be like a deputy collector treasurer and have a sort of a chain of command and merge the two departments together. That was one train of thought at the time. Um, what we have now is not bad, It's, uh, but on the other hand, uh, there could be a better model for combining that. A lot of cities do have a combined collector-treasurer. Um, that's, uh, that you know, I, again, this was a couple of years ago. I don't, you know. It's something that we kicked around. Uh, um, I believe that, and not in the past election, but perhaps um, the previous election, there was a ballot change proposed to bring the... Um, oh, I thought that there was something on here related to the treasurer and the tax collector and combining the positions. Charter Commission. Oh, okay. They was it only <coughs> was it only in the Charter Charter Commission? I thought we had broken it out in some way and, and had a, uh, entertained it recently. No. I don't. I don't think it made it to the ballot. I don't. But I think it was in the Charter Commission one, maybe. Yeah. Definitely was in the Charter Commission one. Yeah. Yeah. I, I agree. At this point, I agree with the, with the uh, with the president. Um, there was different um, circumstances at the time that uh, this was received by the by the city council, introduced by Councilor Jordan. And I think at this time the uh, there might be some merit to it, but I think we have uh, two good offices that work together and, and are working. Each of them are working positions. You know, it's right. not like they're right. they're they're two uh, department heads that sit back and do nothing, but you know, be a department head. They both work um, on a you know daily basis and. I, I have no problem giving leave to withdraw if that's the, the idea. Yeah, I'll make a motion and give a leave to withdraw. This, if circumstances change and more discussion, then we could all, this could always be refiled in the future. Mm -hmm. Any further discussion? Motion to give leave to withdraw. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? So moved. Take item number eight off the table. Aye. Item number eight is introduced by Councilor Roman. Motion made a second to receive and remove from the table. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Um, there's other people that signed on to this. Councilor Lisi, LeBron Martinez, John and Councilor Valentin. Um, let me read it first. This is an order that the Hoyoke, through the ordinances, 
to ordinance create this, see this shouldn't be here a gentrification yeah. mitigation zones or GMZ with will be areas with large working class and highest concentration of poverty according to the US census data tracks above average increases in property values and signs of resident displacement the districts would be subject to a stronger protections for tenants whose housing may be at risk as developers and people with higher incomes move into the neighborhood in in this GMZ zone tenants of a building that's put up for sale would have the first chance to buy it with the poss possible assistance of local example CPA state and federal funds if renters opted not to buy their buildings the sale would be subject to the tax of 1% or less to assist tenants who face this uh, displacement locally developers in these proposed zones would have to create a community impact statements to address how they would affect neighborhoods character existing affordable housing schools and other resources they would be required to meet with any ward councilors in which zone lies the local neighborhood councilor to present their plans make a motion to refer to the ordinance Motion by saying to receive for the committee on ordinance. I, I think I, I forget the reasoning for putting it into this charter and rules committee, but if this is going to have a any discussion, I think it makes more sense to have it with the only committee that can can actually act on it. You know, by our rules, by charter, the ordinance committee must take on any proposed new ordinances. It sounds like this would need a creation of an ordinance. Is there zone any, of a it's also part of a zoning it would be right. part of, yes right. so that's even more important that the ordinance committee um, get going if they're yeah. going to do it yeah. mm -hmm. this was uh, filed late last late last year in December so motions to uh, receive before the committee on ordinance so moved. all those in favor Aye. any opposed so moved motion to remove item number nine from the table Second. motion made a second to receive remove item number nine from the table all those in favor any opposed pursuant to uh, article 2 section 8 in the Massachusetts Constitution the City Council of Hoyle petitioned the state to enact a special act allowing the establishment of a city manager to oversee the daily operations of the city hired by the city of the, the city of Hoyle the City Council will set a term and set pay established by the City Council motion is uh, to receive uh, Council President uh, did give me a call today on um, text day could not be here but he says he believes with the uh, the outcome of the ballot question last November uh, that this is a uh, now a mute point and that he'd be happy to give leave, leave to withdraw. So moved. Second. Motion is second to give leave to withdraw. Is there any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Any opposed? So moved. Five to nothing. Move item number ten from the table. Second. Motion is second to receive and remove item number ten from the table. All those in favor? Any opposed? So moved. Item 10 is introduced by Councilor McGee that the Charter Committee look into adopting a city manager position instead of a two to four year mayoral position. Uh, this is received. Same time, we're all doing discussion on what ballot question we're going to do. So we go along. Okay, look, we're talking. We're talking here. Now, nah. <laughs> well, no, the you know the the miracle jacket appeared last week, and and half of this agenda was in this jacket that was. We're just going to say it was not in city hall for some reason. We'll leave it at that. <laughs> Motion is to give this leave to withdraw for the obvious reasons that the uh, times have changed and the the reasonings for filing it have no longer exist. Is that fair? Yes. All those in favor? Aye. Any opposed? So moved. To remove item number 11 from the table. Motion passed. Second to receive item number 11. Remove from the committee. Remove from the agenda. Remove from the table. Introduced by Councilor Sullivan. All those in favor? Any opposed? So moved. Introduced by Councilor Sullivan. The Sewer Commission and Water Commission be merged into form one board. Motion to give leave to withdraw. Um, can I sure. speak about that? And, and, and that, that would be my inclination to give leave to withdraw for a lot of reasons. I did have a one-on-one uh, -on -one conversation with Councillor Sullivan and we talked about procedure and, and why he had filed this. He can't be here this evening. Um, one of the things he's interested in, and I think it might require a, a different order, is when the Water Department, for legitimate and good appropriate purposes, 
grant an abatement, it does not automatically carry into the sewer bill. And he feels that the sewer commission, you know, I know it's the DPW commission, but they do have two separate agendas and two separate meetings, um, you know, would be better connected with the water commission. I think I don't want to put words in his mouth, but that, that was a, one of the reasons that he wanted to, to file it and discuss it. Um, this goes far beyond, to me, when you combine these two commissions, you're combining two departments, and, and I think that's that's a whole separate uh, issue. But I just wanted to let you know what he said. Councilor Bacon. Um, I just wanted to add, too, that that flow could perhaps occur if we ever get the combined billing going. And I keep reading the minutes looking for the finalization of the contract, but I haven't found it in the minutes yet. They keep referring to it. It goes away for a couple months, and now we're almost at the end of another year. Well, just wait till they ask for another increase, and we can say, but, have a know, nice day. If that was happening, these other discussions could happen more easily. Any further discussion? Um, if if the, chair, the, the uh, chair did recognize the motion to give leave to withdraw, um, the chair will go along with that. I'll talk to Councillor Sullivan about a different language order about the abatement issues to see if we can tie something together with the billing issues and maybe resolve that once and all, all forever. You know, it's and uh, with our new commissioner on the water water commission, we'll get his ear. Any more discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Any opposed? Passes five to nothing. Move item number 12 from the table. Motion by a second to receive and remove item number 12 from the table. All those in favor? Aye. Any opposed? So moved. Aye. Introduced Aye. by Councilor Sullivan and the Sewer Commission and Water Commission be merged into one board, which is, I think, the language. The motion is to give leave to withdraw. I thought we just did that one. Yeah, we're on the right yeah. I'm sorry. That, that's, uh, never mind. Personnel. That's... That's, that's a duplicate. Yeah, we're good on that one. Not a duplicate, but just two of the same thing. Um, it's the one on the, new, the newly found charter group, which is okay. no longer exists. Introduced by Councillor McGee. This has been in committee for some time. It actually has been un discussed uh, three times in the past, but this is a long time ago, Todd. <laughs> That the newly formed charter group look into the pros and cons combining the personnel department, school department, gas and electric personnel offices in the city into one centralized human resource division. Did you mean this charter committee or did you mean the old charter commission? Oh, well, charter see, I, that's, that's where I'm, con I'm not confused. I under this understand. Oh, this group. Yeah. Oh, okay. The, the, this is the group. This, this originally was, was discussed on Oh, May. this is a good idea, though. This it is, is a good idea. Yeah. Oh, the maybe. Oh. <laughs> oh, then okay. Then let's hold off on that. Oh, I'm sorry. Oh, I thought you were talking about the charter commission. Oh. The charter, charter committee. Okay. It was it was last it was tabled in 2013, and to get uh, Mr. Judge to come back in and I think a couple other department heads, it was not on the agenda last November because it was not in the jacket. This was in the old jacket, and I, I can only point that out. You know that you know we now have it back. I, I think we would want two or three different people to come in to discuss this. Does that make sense? Yeah, it's in, in, in essence you only have one person down there now. You're absolutely right. right. I think this is timely. And this, even if it is, some areas project. have a bunch of people. Oh, right. Some have some or none, and it's one. Just think about a corporation. They have one centralized location. Right. They don't have five different offices exactly. spread all over the place. Yeah. So it'd be huge, huge cost savings there too. And that's the key. Is everything in oh, the no. right time again? Absolutely, absolutely. We've been talking about centralized records, mm -hmm. all that stuff. Yeah. So would it make sense to, uh, after we table it, to for the purpose of inviting human resource people from the city, gas and electric, and schools? Yes. Yeah. Any further discussion before we recognize that motion? I withdraw my motion. I'll leave the withdrawal. <laughs> <laughs> now that I understand a little more, okay, thank you. And the motion is to table, and we will invite the uh, re human resource uh, people from the city, Genie, and schools. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? So moved. Item number 13. Take that off the table. Motion by a second to receive. We move from the table. All those in favor? 
and the opposed so moved the city council adopt the rule should a position become vacant where the charter states that the city council may appoint a member to fill a vacancy that the city council shall Amy. the individual we choose was crossed out i'm not sure why linda but that the individual receiving the next highest number of votes in the most recent election as long as the individual is eligible and willing to serve this preserves the integrity of the voting process by reflecting the will of the voters uh, introduced and received by this committee back in 2012. We can put this in the archives together. Okay. I'll make a motion to give it leave. Motion made a second to give leave to withdraw. Can we take this up with um, item number 30, which says something very similar? Sure. Suspend the rules to take up item 30. Second. No objections on the motion to suspend and remove item number 30. All those in favor? Uh, Any opposed? So moved. Okay. Item 30 is in order it was introduced by Councilor Sullivan and enact a set of rules to govern the replacement of a vacated seat in, in an orderly and consistent manner. Um, the motion is to suspend and take this up with item number 28. All those in favor? Aye. Any opposed? With 30. Um, 13. With thir 13. 13. 13. I'm sorry. 13 and 13. 13. Yeah. You gotta get a new system here, you know? <laughs> uh, I'm reading the item from the original agenda of the City Council. Is there any further discussion on both of these matters as a package? Both lead to a trial. No. Okay. Councilor Sullivan, I, I did talk to him today, and again, he apologizes he couldn't be here this evening. Um, it's, I, I think it's, I'm not going to put words in his mouth, but we did, we did talk about it, and there are pros and cons. Um, I think if he wants, he can speak in favor of it at the full city council meeting, although I told him that we'd uh, take it up on another evening. And for some reason, and the reason the chair is without an administrative assistant behind him is I have this on the agenda, but yeah, I, think, the I think the duplicate of his other order says that we are slightly missing this order from the file. But it, it speaks, yeah, it speaks for itself. I mean, I, I think we're okay. It's just, it's just a matter of because uh, originally I had these together, and when I, the agenda came out, this one order came up at the end. All right. Any further discussion? Motion is to give leave to withdraw. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Both orders pass five to nothing. Motion to remove fourteen from the table. Second. Motion may second to receive and remove item 14 from the table. All those in favor? Any opposed? Introduced by Councilor Vacan that no member of the City Council or other elected office of the City of Hoyoke shall be permitted to hold any other elected office, including positions in the Massachusetts General Court. Uh, motion with this was received, referred back in 2012. It's been before this committee twice now and tabled at each time. Um, if I can inquire. Was it tabled because there was a question around legal? I can't remember why it was tabled. The, the last time it was tabled was that April 17, 2013 meeting. Again, this was not in the jacket for the November mm -hmm. 2016 meeting. But the notes written by the chairman then were as it was tabled to do a draft. Yeah, or you're, you're correct, language. draft language. I would like that to be put forth. By by ordinance or by charter. charter? Ordinance would be ideal, but can we do it only by ordinance? I don't know. Because what it is is it's saying you couldn't be the city treasurer and mayor, you couldn't be the clerk and the treasurer, you couldn't right. be a state senator and mayor, uh, state rep. You can't combine any of those is, is basically the intent of it. Right. And 
the reason that I filed it is because I just think it's a conflict of interest. Each role has different interests. It represents different levels of either political uh, positioning or a different <coughs> point in the political process that it addresses a particular matter of law. And so that's really the bigger picture perspective behind this order. Yeah, and, and I think some of these cities that we've heard about where people have gotten themselves kind of jammed up where you get so-and-so wants to be mayor and he also wants to be state rep at the same time, and it's like, no, that's not okay. So I, I just think if you have ever, I, I would like Holyoke to avoid, I, I agree with Linda, I would vote in favor of this. If Obviously, it's have to be drawn up in a legal reform for our final review, make sure everybody's comfortable with the language, but makes to me it makes a lot of sense I know I believe it was Lawrence was one particular situation I remember where there was the uh, somebody got uh, was the state rep and also got mayor and then he didn't want to give up the state rep job and it was like hey come on you know one at a time that's what I see so I think that um, the problem is that you don't want people holding on to seats if they win, but it, I think that we need to be careful with the language because I don't think we want to frustrate or prevent people from running for higher office um, because we know that there is there is a pipeline in place and most oh, yeah. people that sure. run for higher office. Be a candidate. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. So yeah. I think we just want to be careful with the wording and says um, that say, we should talk about the need to vacate within X many days yeah. of right. taking right. on a new seat yeah. as it opposed says, to. Right. It says they can't hold the office not that they can't seek the office right. mm -hmm. so maybe you give like a like a 30-day transition or something like that yeah because it, it, um, it said it there is waiting for legal form so yeah. Well, so draft, is there was there a draft that we could look at? Yeah. And go, you know, so address all our. I questions. think we need to have it. I, that's that's sounds like they requested it, but yeah, it never yeah. it's supposed <laughs> to be done, and now it's yeah. Yeah. I, I refer to legal for draft. Why don't we refer to legal to come back here yep. and, and then we can have something that we can all read and, and feel comfortable with? But with, the, but with the caveat that in the legal form that it doesn't preclude people from being a candidate for the other ones and maybe creates a transition period of 30 days of both, to, if I could make that as an amendment. Well, right. In, in some positions, we already can't do that. For example, if we're sitting on the council and we're going to run for mayor, we can't run for we both. We can't take the papers out. Right. So, so we already have a system where we prevent right. that particular dynamic. Right. Yeah. Um, just to make it clear, would it make sense 30 days when the new, the new office is sworn in? Yeah. You have to give yeah. up any, any, you have to, yeah. can only hold one. The election is in November, right. and you, 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 know, you, yeah, you should be able to finish your the, city council until you get yeah. sworn in. Yep. From the so day you're sworn in. Why don't you just make it like 90 prior days, to sworn in. 90 days for or the just election. prior to being sworn in to the new position? I think most people are going to run <laughs> as soon as they do run, as soon as they get elected or plan for it that way. We, we can discuss the, the amount of days at the next meeting, yeah. Yeah. as long as we get the language and it's easy to change the I number. Think prior that, to being that's, sworn in would make it the easiest. But that's why I was asking if it almost appears that that stuff was debated last time and we're going to be in legal form, right. and it, now it's missing. We lost somehow, the details. somehow it didn't happen. Yeah. You know. The the great jacket caper. It says lost. tabled <laughs> to do, Dan. I have no idea. It doesn't matter at this point. No. <laughs> no. All right, the motion refer it's hieroglyphics. <laughs> motion on, on the uh, refer to the law department to be put into a legal draft or to be returned to committee with, with the caveat with the uh, transitional period in the draft. Yep. All those in favor? Aye. Any opposed? So moved. Take 15 off the table. Motion man second to receive Aye. item 15 and remove from the table. All those in favor? Aye. Any opposed? So moved. Introduced by Councilor McGee, Alexander Bresnahan, oh, oh. Brown Martinez, Soto, Lisey, Tommen. Sir. Lisey. I, remember, no. I think we're on 15. 15. Okay, Lisey. that's because it's over opinion. here. Sorry. She tricked you. <laughs> oh. Sorry. 
This is introduced item 15, introduced by Councilor Lisi. The City Council seek a legal opinion whether the Ordinance Committee can refer an order to the City Council without a recommendation. And I, I think this is any committee can make a re referral without a recommendation, but the Ordinance Committee being more important because the Ordinance Committee, like a charter committee, has to get certain things in legal form before a vote can take place. Motion is to take off the table. All those in favor? Aye. Any opposed? Councilor Lisi. Thanks. Um, so under discussion, there was a issue that came before the ordinance committee at the time and it was a draw there were um, four members on the committee and two people um, voted in favor wanted to vote in favor of the issue two people wanted to vote against the issue and so we couldn't actually get the thing out of committee because um, we, we couldn't get a majority of votes in either direction so what the what the committee could settle on was a vote out of committee without a recommendation and then we asked legal to draw both versions of the ordinance into legal form um, and then there was some contestation as to whether or not we could refer out without a recommendation and whether or not the legal forms were valid um, since we didn't give a recommendation to one side or the other in a, in a, in a favorable light so the legal opinion that we got that's attached to this order here um, if I may Councillor it basically just says, yes, um, of course, um, you can vote to either adopt or reject or um, um, refer to the full council without a recommendation to satisfy the requirements of the rules, which state that um, ordinances shall not be drawn into legal form unless the ordinance committee has taken a vote on the matter. And so that's the key word, like has taken a vote. And so the the vote to refer out without a recommendation constitutes a vote and therefore um, we could in fact have um, the ordinance drawn into legal form in both the um, affirmative and uh, negative versions that were before the council, before the committee, I'm sorry. So then the motion would be that the order is complied with. Right. I think we, I'd like to also yeah, make sure that this is forwarded copies, to yeah. the full city council yeah, in some that way. that would be good to know. Yep. Yeah. So the motion has been made and seconded then. Motion made second so that the order has been complied with and we will ask our administrative assistant to make sure all members of the council and whoever else gets a copy of it. Mm -hmm. all those, any further discussion? No. All those in favor? Aye. Any opposed? So moved. Motion to take up items number 16 through 29 as a package, unless anyone wants to remove something in particular from that package. Motion may second to look at this next part of the agenda, items 16 through 29. Um, I purposely put these on the in this order. Each of these items are filed by counselors who are no longer with us. Uh, each of these items were in that miracle jacket that appeared out of nowhere. Um, many of them dating back to uh, 2014 uh, not to ignore the merits of some of these proposals but I think without because of the age and without a certain city councilor to take lead on one of these items I don't think there would be uh, much chance of them passing for example uh, Councilor Alexander has several items on taking special permits that we've taken on over the past uh, decade or so in, in to, as, as in addition to the zoning uh, laws, laws itself, these special permits, you know, are to get you get permission for certain businesses to do certain things like the uh, repair shops we've been doing and um, auto sales to have a better control over what was becoming a major problem in some of, uh, some of our business uh, areas. So the thought here is that if we give them leave to withdraw, um, certainly anybody can refile or if we wish someone wants to take uh, either tonight or at the full city council council meeting charge of the order we certainly can can bring it back to committee to discuss it but at um, this point if everyone wants to take a minute to read I have one friendly suggestion yep 27 to pull that out that actually I remember Gordon going back in my time machine mm -hmm. Gordon and I actually I remember speaking about this one which was uh, for special meetings, Rule 42, so as you know, we have special meetings. 
but the special meeting states that you can only discuss and have in the agenda the specific items that are articulated for the special meeting so what he's saying is it's not subject to the order of business specified in rule 26 which states that you'll have a president's report and you'll have uh, orders and communications so that's actually just a housekeeping thing um, I think we actually should, could adopt 40, uh, 27. That actually makes a lot of sense. And that just kind of got lost in the crossfire. That's actually a good, that's something we actually do now anyways. We don't have the regular rule 26 order of business when we have special meetings. Um, so I think we could do that one. So I'd like to pull 27 out of the packet. Sure. Okay. So if there's no objection. We're going to act on item 27 separately. And we, you want to just do that now if it's on that motion. All those in favor? Aye. Any opposed? Um, as stated, but I'll read it quickly. It is introduced by Council Alexander. This was at Rule 42. Special meetings be clarified to indicate that such meetings are not subject to the order of business as specified in 26. Yeah. Makes okay. sense? Yeah, we just yeah. adopt it. I'll make a motion Second. to adopt it. Any further discussion? Any? On the motion, all those in favor? Aye. Any opposed? So moved. Adopted 5 to 0. Just a housekeeping question. Councilor Bacon. So for all the rest of these that were posted and have been available to the public, we don't need to read each one of them, or do we? All these old orders? Um, I'll suspend the rules to dispense with the reading of them. Second. A okay, motion may second that these, the rest of the items under this motion on the table, the readings will be sus uh, suspended? Yeah. On that motion, is there any discussion? And again, I, I, you're reading them, and, and I think the way I just explained it, and this agenda is posted. Um, is these are very old orders and at the full city council meeting we'll have another chance to uh, if anybody wishes to put them back take uh, charge and put them back in committee that's fine but um, a couple of these have actually been complied with but I think leave to withdraws will take care of the uh, take care of the order yep. of business here just quickly Councilor McGee um, with regard to this I'll follow up with uh, Gordon on his orders and see if you want some of them refiled or I'll file them again so I'll do it that way uh, as far as 20 um, that was way back when there was going to be a casino the, the yeah guy, that's yeah and we were trying to figure out where who what when why and how so I said just set up a committee to discuss those issues um, so that obviously is gone yeah and uh, doing 29 is in the ordinance committee currently yeah why don't we just um, just so we have to make it? We'll do 29 separate in a second. You want to put or did, no, I'm sorry. We, this this 29 is in the We're all set on 20. Yeah. We don't need yeah, that. Yeah. That's been taken up somewhere else. We can give it leave to withdraw. Yeah, we already heard anything. Yeah. yeah. The, um, when you think about it, item 17 has actually been complied with. That's what we've been doing with the uh, financial transfers, but we. We, we amended the language as to the way it was proposed here. The, the other thing, too, is, and I forgot, is most of these orders really require an ordinance change. And again, this would only be to recommend to refer them to the ordinance committee. So we can we have that option, too, at the full city council meeting, but I suggest leave it to withdraw as an order. Any further discussion? Motion is, then, items. Where do we start? 16, 16 through 16 29. 29. Through 29. Right? With the exception of 27. With the exception of 27, which we acted on, mm -hmm. be given leave to withdraw. So All those second. in favor? Aye. Any opposed? So moved. Motion to adjourn, unless we have any other housekeeping. Motion so. I mean, a second to adjourn. Um, there will be a few things left in the jacket if anybody wants to pick a date in a month or two, or if we want to do that at a later date, I'm, I'm open. Yeah. But well, we sent some stuff out for a meeting. Yeah. Some follow-up legal stuff. It'd so. be great to meet within a month or so. Okay. Yeah. Mo is Monday everything. the better day? I like Mondays. With the exception, I would always well, you know, finance would get the first. Finance is Wednesday, so two days. Yeah. And we're gonna pretty much get everything out of the jacket. So let's not go too long though. Maybe th like three weeks. That should be enough, Anjo. Huh, 
I think so. Yeah, yeah there's no, I mean, as long as everybody's ready. Yeah, because otherwise we're going to do the summer to recess and I'm going to have budget <laughs> hearings. That's going to make, yeah. Supposedly we're getting the budget our first meeting in May. Wow. So. That would be uh, May 8th or May 15th? May 15th. May 15th sound good? Yeah. All right, sure. so we'll set it for that. 6.30 again? 6.30 good? Yep. Good? 6.30. Okay. All right. The chair would recognize that uh, Councilor Leahy did join us more than halfway through the meeting, and we appreciate that. And uh, we former certainly... Former Councilor Ferreira. <laughs> former Councilor Ferreira <laughs> and our, our favorite our favorite journalist yes. from, from, the, from, the <laughs> from the Republican, Mike Plaisance. I don't know. <laughs> oh, look, here I am uh, recognizing you. Uh, I am. <laughs> do you want, my, you want to borrow my gavel? <laughs> uh, on a motion to adjourn. All those in favor? Aye. Any opposed? We are adjourned. <laughs>